Welcome to Adventures with Kramer. And so, as you can tell from the title, there are some things that have been frustrating me about Starlink Internet, whether it was like the initial piece or just as time's gone on. A um, couple little things to preface I am a high school teacher. And so, with everything that's been going on, I've been doing a lot of distant learning stuff. And so, needing to be able to teach stuff live and have that happening has been super important. And I had a lot of very high expectations with Starlink Internet. And here's some kind of things that it's either been like frustrating or kind of let me down in the process. So we got seven things. We have the ferromagnetic adapter. Now, some of your comments definitely helped me out in understanding this a little bit better, but it helps out with the electromagnetic interference or like the radio frequency, basically help them make it like a nice clearer signal coming through that Cat5e power over ethernet cable that is on there. The thing that I don't like about it though, I mean, I know that it's good, but I can't stand that it's a permanent like molded on mount and I can't take it off. And as you can see, I mean, I know that it's like just a, like an image on there, but I have measured it and it's a full three quarters of an inch in diameter. It makes for a huge hole going through the outside wall back into the house. and I can't stand that. The regular Cat5e cable itself is rather still large on the actual plug piece. I like whenever I'm doing my own like custom like running Cat5 type cables or anything like that. All I have to worry about is the diameter of the cable itself, which is going to be significantly smaller. And all I have to do is be able to drill a small hole on that, put a little bit of silicone to help seal it up. This makes for a fairly large hole. I don't know. I just think it's kind of frustrating on there. Um, I can't necessarily cut the cable because I don't know which pattern was being used when connected to the satellite dish. You can't see that without breaking it and trying to take it apart. What frustrates me is being able to actually access the router. Um, right now, because of the better than nothing beta, it is locked out. Um, you have the initial setup. If I want to go back through and change up like SSIDs, passwords, things like that, I have to actually reset the router physically to be able to kind of on there or through the app I can, but then I have to just do the full reinstall. It's not just a nice and easy go in there and switch out like you normally access on existing routers. So I know I understand why they're doing it, especially with some of how it's set up and I want to use their router, one, I like the look of it, but two, um, it also has some extra logging information that if you use your own router on the app, there's a bunch of statistics that you're not able to get if you don't use their specific router. So although it does have some good pieces, it is kind of frustrating not to be able to get into more accessible stuff on there and try and help change up different settings or just honestly to be able to know more about it. Is the power consumption. There's a couple different videos out there um, that people are starting to do some tests on it. Um, my kilowatt meters actually, it broke. I wasn't able to use it anymore. Um, but I mean, what I was seeing so far is that they're hitting well over 100 to 120 watts of draw on just an ether, like that satellite dish but they're doing that though when it's in the middle of snow. It's just, it's a lot of power. That power brick gets hot. Um, I'm actually surprised though it doesn't have some type of extra cooling. I'm not sure if it's because it's a little bit of like the metal type to it, if that in itself is helping out with enough passive cooling or not, but it, it does warm up quite a lot. And um, that makes it kind of frustrating. I mean, I know 100 some watts doesn't seem like a lot, but it's just, it's that much extra of a little bit of a thing. It'd be nice to know when some of that stuff is going on. So maybe someday they'll adjust it in the app to where it's like, oh, hey, like that's something that you could like turn on or turn off or I don't know. I mean, cause even though it might get cold and especially if it's running off of a thermostat, just because it's cold outside doesn't mean that it needs to actually be like running hot and setting and warming up on the surface of it. Um, I don't know. I, I, I would like that to be a, 
another either an automatic temperature base option or something that I could go through and manually be able to actually select and do and be like, hey, I know it's going to be snowing. I want to have it on for the next like a couple days or something like that in order to be able to make sure that the dish stays nice and clear. Next biggest one, monthly cost. Um, at first, this did not bother me at all. Um, I was already paying $99 a month. Actually, I'm still having to pay $99 a month. I currently am having to actually have two ISPs. I am doing the Starlink one. Really wanted to try and give it a chance. Um, the terms of service does say that I can actually return it within the full 30 days for a free refund. And trust me, I am thinking about that. And the biggest reason why is because I'm teaching. Starlink has been working great for a lot of different reasons, and there's going to be another one, which is the number one reason why I'm going to kind of frustrate with it. From what everybody's been saying and all the comments, what you guys have been showing, this $99 a month is extremely high cost. Now, I know that Elon's been wanting to try and help cut the cost down. I know this is like a better than nothing beta. I didn't have to sign up for it. I get all those kinds of pieces. I just, I'm hoping that over time this will go down. But at the same time, and the cost doesn't go like when the cost goes down, I'm hoping that I also I don't have to sacrifice like speeds and things like that in order to be able to make that happen. Um, that would be pretty frustrating. Next biggest piece though is the initial cost. And so yes, it is four hundred and ninety-nine dollars for just the kit. But then you get smacked with a fifty dollar shipping fee plus another forty three dollars in tax. Your your six hundred dollar bill in order to be able to buy this. It's not just this, the normal 500 that what it has normally been being posted. Um, same kind of thing, I'm wondering, I haven't hit a monthly bill for reoccurring on there, seeing what the taxes might end up being for whatever the monthly fee is. I do know in the terms of service that if the price changes depending upon the something to do with the like the actual service, they have to give you enough of a heads up and enough time before the price ends up changing compared to the amount of like service you're being guaranteed. Um, so who knows, maybe if all of a sudden more and more of these satellites start going up and it starts going faster, uh, that would suck if all of a sudden they start taking the price back up. But because it got started into it early enough, this should actually kind of grandfather me in for a little bit but I'm not exactly sure how that works. Just frustrating though that it was so much money. Um, I would love to be able to pay this kind of money to like a local place in order to be able to get fiber and it just, I even checked with my local ISP to be able to see if that was possible and was told that no, nope, they're not gonna be able to have fiber for years even at that and like an unoptimal trying way to look at it, which is kind of frustrating, but it's okay. Um, it's, it's it's like I want faster internet here's my money let's go like just want to be able to make that happen but next biggest thing that's, that's kind of getting frustrating though is the, the downloads are great don't get me wrong I love the downloads downloads are awesome but the uploads are they're they're a whole nother story um, it's still good it is still better than what I have been receiving uh, but sometimes you'll start seeing and getting kind of excited because when you run a speed test, a lot of times it'll start out at 30 megabits per second. And so it's super high and it's like, oh man, awesome. And then it just keeps going down and down and down and down. And then eventually it's just like, it drops down. So, I mean, it is hitting what they quoted of anywhere in like that, like near 15 megabits per second. Some of the slower ones that I've had recently down to like nine. The more weather I've been seeing, the I have some seen some more drops. It's not as significant of different drops. I mean, the to get the 140 megabits per second, it needs to be a nice clear day or night in order to be able to make that happen. Um, if you do like the video, please make sure to subscribe, click the like button, leave comments down below. Tell me what things that you like or don't like. Do look forward to video on um, just some more information about Starlink that I'll be doing. The thing that I can't stand the most is drop connections. There is nothing more frustrating to me when I am in the middle of teaching a live lesson and I'm talking and I'm talking and then everything kind of goes silent. Can't quite tell what's happening. And then it is just 
internet is done. And so it's different for those that have been teaching education, doing some of these different pieces and having this happen, or whether or not you're in a business and all of a sudden you are losing connection, it is frustrating. It's the same type of thing that I've been noticing when playing video games. It just does not stay stable for long enough. I know they're promising that this is going to continue to keep it like it's going to get better in the future. That just doesn't do me any good right now while I'm teaching. And so um, this is one of the reasons why it's kind of frustrating why I've even thought about even returning Starlink is because although I know those promises are awesome and it's great to hear them, what I need is something stable right now. I need to be able to have for an hour of class at a time, have class, be able to set and present the information, present the PowerPoints, present the videos, show those different pieces to students, be able to have the questions and answer time, have it to where they can be sharing stuff and not have it to where all of a sudden I'm talking and then students can't hear me. I can't see anything because they're not able to respond back because I don't have the internet connection. And so it's gone to the point where I'm actually having to have um, I, the kind of learning piece that I'm using with class Microsoft Teams I have to have that up on my cell phone, seeing the chat feature on that. So in case that drops, students are able to send a message. I'm able to see that and have this happening. And sometimes then it's just gone. And it's not saying for obstructions. It's not saying why. It's just not working at all. And so that gets frustrating that that's happening. Even with. I, I would still buy it again. I mean, of course I'm going to. I mean, a, it's tough. I but it's 10 times the download and sometimes it can be three times the upload. Is it frustrating? Yes, but you're going to get that with anything. And for a lot of different people out in rural areas, you either have like a point to point wireless internet, or you're going to have some really slow DSL, or you're going to have satellite, whether it's like, I don't know, like the QsNet, if they still exist anymore, some of those different ones out there. And it's frustrating. Yes. When there's weather comes in, you have those types of issues. Has Starlink been better in weather? Yes. I, I know it's going to get better. It's just frustrating at this beginning time point. And I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. And I'm hoping I can just kind of muddle through it here for now until it gets to that point that, you know what, hey, it, it's at the part where they're saying there's like 30, 40,000 satellites up in the air and are up in the sky. And all this kind of like laser point to point stuff is helping out and it's just speeds are going so much better and you have the ground mounts and you have all these things happening and so thanks for watching the video if you have any questions comments things like that thanks and peace